I'm going to share on today's episode how the Google leak happened, what the motives for it were. And it looks like it's actually making its way into the mainstream press now. Google just came out with a statement about it to The Verge. At first, they weren't admitting it to The Verge, and now they admitted it with a statement. So this article is called Google Confirms the Leaked Search Documents Are Real. And they said, we would caution against making inaccurate assumptions about search based on out of context, outdated or incomplete information. We've shared extensive information about how search works and the types of factors that our systems weigh while also working to protect the integrity of our results from manipulation. A lot of people are angry about these leaks. And the reason that they're angry is because the leak shows that they have ranking factors to measure things which they told a lot of SEOs that they couldn't measure. And that's why people are angry about this. And that's actually why the leak happened. Before I get there, I want to share a crazy thread that I read about Parasite search engine optimization. This is from Nadia Kurdadzi. She's a great follow. I just discovered her yesterday. Nadia Kurdazi on Twitter X. She said, I've just discovered how SEO agencies hijack Reddit for their clients. They find relevant subreddits, then post a question using this format. What's the best SaaS tool agency for doing XYZ? So they post, what is the best for doing this? And then after two to three days, they edit the original post and then they add a link to their client's website. So there's more ways that this is done, which she didn't add. So they will post this question. Then they will buy upvotes for the post. So the post will make it onto the front page. You'll find like a, a relevant subreddit with not a lot of people on it, but enough people to get responses. So they buy an upvote for this maybe like 10 upvotes. It shows up on the first page of the subreddit. They get some responses. And then two to three days later, they edit the original post. They don't just put a link to their clients' websites or their own websites. Maybe they're doing it for themselves. Maybe they're affiliates. Maybe they're doing it for their own products, their startup founders. Maybe they are SEO agencies and they're doing it for clients. But they don't just put links in. They don't even have to put links in. They can just name the product and then people will go to Google and search for the product and find it like that. And I thought the language that Nadia shared which is what is the best SaaS tool or agency or whatever for doing this. I've seen that myself. We've all seen that. And you go to Reddit, you think you're getting fresh content. And then two to three days later, it's changed. That it was so interesting. The language that people were using. And I said, I got to share this on the podcast. So, okay, now I'm going to get back to the Google leak. I'm going to share why it happened. Because the guy who leaked it. So the way that it happened, this SEO consultant got a hold of these leaked documents from Google. 2,500 pages of API documentation containing 14,014 attributes, which attributes being ranking factors. And he had this choice. Should I keep this silent or should I share this and try to make it public? And he was a type before this who believed everything that Google shared. He would just take whatever the representatives at Google said about how search worked. He would just take that at their word. And even if he saw contradicting evidence from how the search engine results behaved or how his websites behaved, he would ignore that. And he would say, the Google rep said this, and so that's the way that it must be. And he had clients. His clients would ask, how come our results aren't behaving the way that they should? How come our websites aren't behaving in Google the way that it should? And he would just be like, I don't know. I probably lost business because of that. He probably had a hard time because of that. I imagine lots of other SEOs had a hard time because of that. And he must have felt very frustrated at times. He would get answers and they weren't the answers that he w wanted to hear. And then he gets this leak. So he's frustrated. He's, he's frustrated because he's been doing SEO for years. Things aren't making sense. He's seen things that doesn't make sense on the way that Google says the algorithms should behave and the way that they actually behave. And so he's frustrated. He has clients. He has people to answer to. He's frustrated. And so he gets these documents. And these documents say that they can measure and they are measuring all of these things that they told him to his face that they said that they could not measure. And he's angry. And so what does he do? He shares them with Rand Fishkin. Rand Fishkin is a leader in SEO. And Rand said in, in his article where he exposed these documents that Rand was wronged by Google. I don't know how Rand was wronged. But Rand is a founder of Moz, which is one of the top SEO pieces of software. And he's also someone who just taught a lot of SEOs. Moz was great at content marketing. And so Moz did so many articles and videos teaching search engine optimization. In fact, I learned the basics of SEO from Moz and partly from Rand. And so lots of people look up to Rand and know who Rand is. And Rand has a huge influence in the SEO community. And so 
What does he do? He shares these documents. And that's how they came to be leaked. And then lots of other people who felt the same as the guy who shared them, they started sharing these too because they were very frustrated. And it just caught fire very fast because there were so many SEOs who weren't thinking for themselves. They were just listening to what the Google rep said. And even if they saw contradictory evidence from the way that their own websites behaved or their clients' websites behaved or whatever, even if they saw contradictory evidence, they wouldn't really think twice about it. So I now want to read a post that I found. This post is from somebody named Corey Gerber. And he said, I believe the relationship between the Google parrots and Google sheeps has reached its end. So this person says, Google parrots are search engine optimizers who pretend everything Google says is the absolute truth. The Google sheeps are search engine optimizers who blindly follow whatever the Google parrots proclaim. So there's the Google parrots and the Google sheeps. The Google parrots, they just say that everything that Google says is the truth. It's gospel. The Google sheeps are the ones who just blindly follow whatever the parrots say. And he goes, I term this dynamic the Google Triangle. Many individuals constantly seek validation from the Google search relations team. And you can see this on Twitter all the time with the Google reps who speak about, we don't know this necessarily, or Google might not know this, or we might not use this for a ranking factor. And you can see the people responding and in the exact way that this post describes. So the post says, many individuals constantly seek validation from the Google search relations team to gain mainstream acceptance. This is how Google has shaped the perception of the SEO industry over the years. As, just, as someone who's seen this myself so many times on Twitter, on X, on so many other places, it explains, I think, pretty well why this SEO who shared the documents with Rand, why he did it, and why so many other SEOs are shocked and annoyed and angry at these documents because they, a lot of them just treated whatever Google said as absolute truth. A lot of these other SEOs, they were probably getting bad results because they moved off exactly what Google said and not off of what their in instincts said. And I talked about this on yesterday's podcast. The way that I moved, I, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm not frustrated by this at all, actually. I think it's, what, what's, what's the word? Not really f comical. It's more like enter it's entertaining as a SEO. I find it to be entertaining. And also very validating. It validates a lot of things that I thought. But the reason that I don't find it frustrating is because when I would think about how SEO should be done, I would think about, well, if I was designing an algorithm to prevent spam and return the best results, what types of things would I care about? What types of things would make sense? And I didn't think that much about the limitations of what was measured and what was not measured. Now, between different companies, it's a bit harder. So I shared Parasite SEO a few minutes ago on this podcast. That's a bit harder to measure because Parasite SEO was specifically done on other websites. And Google might not have the IP address information of the people posting on these other websites. Not yet. Oh, I, I forgot to mention this about that Parasite SEO post. The Parasite SEO post is very interesting because I will bet that in the next year or two, it's going to become very hard to do this. And here's why. It's so important to mention this and so important to think like this, this is the way that I think. Google typically makes investments in companies that get a huge share of voice in SERPs, user-generated content companies specifically. And so Reddit is one of these companies. And there's a very good chance that Google may already be invested in Reddit or that they're going to, or that they're going to have a deal or they, they already have a deal where they can see IP addresses of the people who are posting. And so you can now you have an IP address of the people who are posting, and you can use that IP address and link it to who is on the Google Search Console. Google Search Console is Google's proprietary tool for accessing their search index. So Google can see the IP addresses that are linked to different websites through both Google Search Console or Google Analytics. And then they can see the IP addresses of who's posting on Reddit. And someone might say, oh, well, you can use a VPN. Yes, you could use a VPN, but there's many other different ways to identify people. And so if they have information from Reddit, then it becomes easier to identify and connect people to their websites. And so I really just think what is possible, and I move very cautiously. If I was to do anything black hat, which I don't do, of course, or anything gray hat, which I don't do, of course, I think generally the best strategy, especially if you don't feel like you can, because I, I see a lot of people who wrote comments, I feel like this is going over my head. This is like too much. Just the general best piece of advice is accept if you're not like a super sophisticated digital marketer just accept that google knows everything instagram as as well meta will know everything whatever platform you're on they're going to know everything so if you're going to try to do something that goes against what you're not supposed to be doing just think twice 
and maybe take a little bit longer to get towards your goal, but at least you didn't put yourself at risk. Because a lot of people are like, this is too much. And it's like, look, that's okay. That's fine that it's too much. Just try to do the best marketing that you can. Do the basics of SEO. You can find keywords that you're almost ranking for with Google Search Console. Maybe you're on page two or three of them. And then you can make articles and you can make posts targeting them. And don't target posts at the top of the funnel. Don't target keywords at the top of the funnel. Target them more at the bottom of the funnel where there's a purchase intent, where there's less competition, where people are looking to use or buy something target that, submit your URLs to Google Search Console, submit your sitemaps to Google Search Console, the basics, put your keywords in your meta description, your page title, especially the page title, that's number one, the H1, the basics. And if you do a lot of these things, then you're going to be fine. And I think shortcuts are cool, especially if you're savvy enough to do them and to get away with them. But oftentimes, and I'm going to end it with this, oftentimes the best shortcut if you're a frequent listener of the podcast, you know what I'm going to say. The best shortcut is the long cut. And honestly, that's what a lot of Google documentation showed, that the best shortcut is the long cut. Google has ways. This is, this is literally from the long article that announced the release of these documents. I'm going to read this, and I, I shared this on two episodes ago, but I think it's so prescient. Brand matters more than anything else. Google has numerous ways to identify entities sort, rank, filter, and employ them. Entities include brands, brand names, their official websites, and associated social accounts. All right, that's all for this episode of The Other Show. This is episode 330. I'm going to be talking about this leak a lot more. I'm also going to be looking through the comments that I get on these podcasts and answering questions. So if you have a question, let me know, and I will record an answer to it on maybe tomorrow's podcast or the podcast after. If you're wondering why I've been whispering on this whole episode, it's because I am recording this from this crazy hotel lobby, crazy hotel lobby bar that I'm in. And I went to a little alcove with a nice light and a nice couch and people walking by behind me. And I've been recording here. So, okay, that's it for this episode. I do this thing every day, daily, seven days a week. This is 330. Haven't missed a single day of doing it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.